Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Resolve Fusion. And this is another depth blur effect. Now I've talked about depth blur in a couple of other tutorials, but in this tutorial, I wanted to show you how to create a custom rack focus tool. And I think this is a very useful effect that gives you advantages that you can't get with the built-in depth blur tool. And in the description, I'll give you a macro if you don't want to have to build it yourself. So anyway, let's make a start. So I've set up this basic scene, looks like this. And what I'm doing is I'm applying the fusion depth blur to it over here on the left, that's that. And over here on the right, I'm applying my custom defocus. So what I've done here is I've done a rack focus from the foreground to the background. And I'm gonna just talk you through some of the differences here. So first of all, obviously over on the left hand side, we've got the built-in depth blur. And I want you to look at what's happening here with the lights uh, as they go out of focus. They've got this rather odd sort of square shape. I'm not sure quite why that's happening. It's a sort of a, a advanced box blur I think they're using here. Whereas over here on the right hand side, we're actually getting these nice bokeh circles or we could actually turn them into any shape that we want. And you can see how nicely they overlap with each other, for example, here. It's, it's a really nice effect. So if we go to the other end of the rack focus, if we actually zoom in here, you can see there are some distinct problems here. It doesn't look right at all. It's certainly not looking like a, a focus effect. Whereas over here, we've still got those nice bokeh circles and you can see how they are sort of overlapping with the foreground as well and that's that's really good and if we come to the middle i think it's very obvious that how bad this is it's all a little bit jaggy it's really not looking nice at all whereas here again we've got a really nice smooth photographic effect on the right hand side so let's look at building this custom rack focus tool so first thing we need to do is we need to add a custom tool what we're going to do is we're going to take the scene output, this here, and you'll notice that it's got a Z buffer because my renderer is set to output the Z buffer. If you don't know how to do that, you need to come to the renderer, you need to come to output channels, open that up, and you need to turn on Z here, and that will send the Z channel out through to the rest of the composition. So we're going to take this scene into our custom tool. So initially we don't see anything. So let's first of all come over to the Inter tab here and let's enter an expression for intermediate one. Open brackets, Z1 minus N1, close brackets, divided by negative N2. So let's just quickly come over to the config, number controls, let's turn off everything except for the first two. Number one, I'm going to call focal point and number two, I'm going to call depth. Actually, I'm just going to turn off those points as well. So that's a bit tidier to look at. So now I want to come over to channels and I'm just going to concentrate on the red channel and I'm going to type I1 for the red channel. And in the viewer, let's look at the red channel like that. So now we can use these controls to set up our focal point and our depth. So I'm going to go for negative 20 for the focal point and say something like 40 for the depth. So you can see that I can now adjust the focal point using the top slider. And indeed, actually, if we look at the numbers down here at the bottom, if I hover, you'll see the numbers. So if I want to focus on this sphere here in the middle, that's negative 36. So let's enter that. Well, actually, we've already there, let negative 36. And what the depth is going to do is determine how far in front and behind of that point, we are in focus. So I went for 100. You can see a lot more of the background is in focus. So I'm gonna set that back down to 40. And let's get a little bit more complex. So let's come back to the intermediate tab and enter a value for I2. So negative Z1 divided by N2 plus one plus N1 divided by N2. So this is not going to be in itself terribly interesting. If we actually look at what that looks like, so come to channels and set that to I2, you'll see that 
it's basically the same, but the the focal point is set to a different place. So it's set further forward. So what we actually need to do is we need to invert I2. And we can do that by typing into intermediate 3, 1 minus I2. And then if we look at I3, you can see that's inverted. So then what we can do is we can take I1 and I3 and choose the maximum of those two. So in intermediate four, we're going to type max, open brackets, I1, comma, I3, close brackets. And now if we look at I4, you can see exactly what's happening here. Our sphere is in focus here because it's black, so therefore it's not going to get any blur. Our background is blurred and our foreground is also blurred. So let's just reduce the depth there down to maybe 10 and you can see we've only got a really really narrow strip there that's in focus. So now we've actually kind of built the effect. What we do need to do though is we need to clamp it. So let's come back to the intermediate tab and let's enter an expression for i5. So it's going to be min open brackets max open brackets i4 comma zero close brackets comma one close brackets. And that's just basically clamping the I4 result to the zero to one range so we don't get any nasty artifacts. So then we can use I5 as the red channel like that. So then what we can do is we can add the defocus tool. And what we want to do is we want to pipe the custom tool into the effect mask input of the defocus. We want to take our scene and pipe it into the input of the defocus. We need to switch our viewer back to color. Let's look at the defocus like that. Now we need to come over to settings for the defocus and we need to set the channel to red. So what we need to do is we need to come to the controls and set up a defocus size. So let's go for 30 and it looks like this. Well, we don't really want this bloom thing because bloom is not actually a terribly convincing effect unless you actually want it. So let's just turn that down to zero. And let's also switch to maybe the circle because I think that gives a better bokeh effect. So now we can just adjust our focal point. So let's try and focus on the foreground here. So that's negative 12 here. So if I dial in negative 12 for the focal point, this is in focus here. And if I wanted to focus on my background text here, that's negative 81, I think that comes into focus there. Then let's have a look at the depth there. If we wanted more in focus, we could increase that to 60. So it's all working pretty well. So there are a number of advantages to using this method. You'll notice we've only got two controls and that's really all we need. All we need is to say, OK, what's in focus, which we can ascertain very easily. So I want this to be in focus. I can just read the Z depth for that particular point and then how deep do we want the focus to be so if we want that to be very shallow indeed we've got a very shallow depth of field by contrast the fusion depth blur has got three controls and i don't really understand why that's necessary i'm sure there's a very good reason but i just find it confusing having to use three controls when two is probably going to be fine the other thing is that with this depth blur you've only got three options and they're not great. Uh, if we look at the box blur option, for example, you can see very clearly that it's actually a box. You know, we've got a, those, those have gone square at the back there. So that's not going to be useful for any purposes other than speed, I think. Soften is a little bit rubbish as well. You can see lots of sort of boxy artifacts there. So it's obviously just a, a more sophisticated box. And super soften is probably just a, a more sophisticated box still. But it's just not great. Whereas if we come over to defocus, we've got all the controls that we want really here. We can change the lens type, you know, and we can change the number of lens sides to seven or whatever. And we've got all these different options for the lens type. I always tend to think that ultimately the circle is going to look better, but you know, you can do whatever you want. And we've also got a bloom if we actually decide we want a little bit of bloom. It's really up to you what you want to do, but it's it's extremely useful. And if you didn't want to use that, but you still wanted to use this 
focus routine because it's simpler. You could switch to Gaussian blur, which again is a hell of a lot better than the box blurs that are in depth blur. So it's giving you all those extra options. And finally, I wanted to point out that obviously this is not confined to use with Fusion's own 3D scenes. In this case, I've got this image that I've created in Blender. Obviously, I've got the Z channel enabled in the EXR output, and I'm getting this nice depth blur effect on this imported image as well. And finally, let me just quickly show you the macro. So it's called Rack Focus SU. Let's take our image into it and let's pipe it out into the defocus. Now, what I've done is I've made it so that all of the four channels are actually operative here. So you can use any one you want. So let's use alpha, for example, which is the default for the defocus. And then we can just use the controls here. So let's focus on here. This is 16. Let's give ourselves a little bit of depth like so. So very, very easy to work with. So as I say, I'll give you a link to that and I hope you enjoy using it. Thanks very much indeed for watching. See you again soon.